welcome to the bonus content of the cranial nerves episode. In the episode, we talked about how each cranial nerve assessment is going to be very different from clinician to clinician, so you get an inside peek of how Randy and my um, assessments are. So like I said in the episode, I like to start top down, but I do start with eyes first, so I'm going to go ahead and do perla. So I do twice on this side of the eye, where I have them, I'm looking at this eye first, and I do it twice where I'm looking at this eye second. And then I do here, I look at this eye, and then here again, I'm looking at the opposite eye, looking for pupil constriction. Then I'm staying with the eyes, and I'm gonna have them look, follow, in the letter H, looking for nystagmus. I'm gonna move in a diagonal, all the way down, one more diagonal. I come back to center to do accommodation. Tell me when it gets blurry. Perfect. Then I go ahead and have them close their eyes. What I just do? Touch here. What I just do? Touch here. What I just do? Touch here. Perfect. And last one, what I just do? Touch here. Keep your eyes closed. What I just do? Two snaps in this ear. Three snaps in this ear. Perfect. So I make sure that they tell me which side and then also how many times. Um, then I would move down the face to um, smell, so I would have them smell either um, a hand sanitizer, rubbing alcohol, something similar, um, and then just making sure that they're able to smell, they don't have to distinguish what it is, and then I move down to the mouth, so big smile, big frown, stick out your tongue, move it side to side, big swallow, bite down, and shrug your shoulders. Keep them there, don't let me press you down. And then I would move on to my balance assessment, which would be part of my normal concussion test as well. So for my cranial nerve assessment, like I said in the episode, I kind of just go into it. I don't have that much of a, a rhythm to it. I just kind of flow and kind of go through a checklist of what I need to do. Um, a lot of times I'm going to start with the, um, uh, the accessory nerves. So I'll have them go and shrug for me. Hold for me, good, perfect, nice, relax. Then have them give me a big smile, big frown, stick out your tongue, move it side to side, go ahead and swallow, bite down, good. And then obviously when they're biting down, right, we're trying to look to make sure that they're getting that nice little masseter to actually contract, because that's what we're really looking for. Uh, then I'll have them go and close your eyes. Where am I at? Forehead. Where am I at? Cheek. Good. Which cheek? My right cheek. Good. And then keeping your eyes closed. Where am I at? Left ear. Good. Where am I at? Right ear. Good. Perfect. Then go ahead and open your eyes. And then what I'll do from there is I'll go with pupil response. So I'll cover this eye. Still kind of looking at both. Good. I'm looking for that response. I'm looking at the response in both eyes while I do that. The nice thing with kind of covering is you get to kind of see both how it responds to the dimming light on both sides and then actually shining, I can actually see how they react. Um, from there, I'll actually go into the smooth pursuits. All right, and then from there, I basically tie it into my uh, bombs assessment. Um, I'll go from there. And then obviously when they're walking, I can kind of get an, a sense of their balance and gait. Uh, same thing with like vision, looking at the scoreboard and stuff. So that gives you a good idea of how our generic cranial assessments are. This doesn't encompass everything because we do sometimes vary some uh, more. We'll do uh, taste is one that you're going to come across um, that you should be doing with uh, like Gatorade or even licking a stick of gum. Again, just like smell, they don't have to get the exact taste down. They just have to know that it's normal taste for them. Um, and like, uh, I forgot to do in mind the vision assessment of like um, reading a scoreboard. I'll have them read my shirt or something. So, mm -hmm. but in general, you can see how cranial nerve assessments are done by two very different clinicians.